creativity. It is the addiction. We need it. We got to have it. People need it so they can grow with it. They're going to make money off your creativity and you're going to have to live with that. And then you're going to have to listen to the self inside, go, how do you let this happen? And uh, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut, because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. My journals. (laughs) If you could see them, eh, you'd probably look at them and say, what a mess. (laughs) Especially the handwriting. (laughs) Just page after page. What's really interesting is I'm in a brand new journal, so uh, there's there, there are fewer pages uh, that have been written on than there are those that haven't been written on. And when I look at those blank pages ahead, it's like, oh my God, what is going to land on that page one day? What is life but time on the clock? My mother always accused my child self that he was going to sleep his life away. As a kid in grown-up shoes, I'd love to grab one one-hundredth of that rest time without feeling guilty about wasting the ticks on the clock. Because you aren't getting them back, the depth of the day can take away from living life. We are so attached to making sure we're somewhat on time that in all things before a moment happens, we are so locked in on the physical weight of the expectation that we miss out on the layers of the requirement to get there. Life isn't about the victory. It reminds me of my very first book. It was supposed to be a book of 1,000 pieces of poetry. But once I started the research for the book, the best part of the writing wasn't anywhere near the poetry. It was everything around it. So it became one man's 1,021 thoughts. So I asked that question again. What is life but time on the clock? What's in your wallet? Hmm. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess. A chronological walkthrough in everyday world. I am a daily writer. You take moments like this. What is time but time on the clock? You try to explain those moments to a future reader and to a self that is sitting there falling witness to the ink that is being smeared on a page. What is life but time on the clock? This is the daily mess. Is it a waste of time to at least acknowledge the what if? My daily goal is to not write the storm before the event. Acknowledging would be identifying without a picture, right? Here's the situation. Mentally preparing for what could be a world war. To ignore the potential is denying the truth. But to worry about it is putting the mind and heart in a bad place. Fear is always going to write the untold story. So how should we walk in a world of what if? I mean, my grandparents, nor my mother and father... They didn't have the quickness of the internet during their world wars, one and two. Through social media, it feels like we're already at war. But how do we prepare for this? That's the failing and the falling of what if. But to acknowledge it puts us in that place of wanting to write a story, not a book. A life and style based on preparation. They built bomb shelters during my mom and dad's days. World War I, World War II. They took shelter underneath desks while they were in school. Really, truly, what is our next step? Or am I playing with the what if? Just shrugging your shoulders? Rubbing your eyes? Sipping on another cup of coffee? Taking down another Red Bull? Another swig of something else? A toke of this and a toke of that? Pop a pill? Whatever it's going to take to get you away from the story that your mind is trying to write... But it's there, every page in social media. You try to find it on Facebook. People don't want to talk about it. But it's on their minds because I am there on the front line. I'm listening to you. I hear you talk. I hear your opinion. I can't react because I don't need my actions to become your reactions. And so you take that what if and you try to plant it somewhere and you try to deal with it. And and what happens is, is you find yourself acknowledging it. I will acknowledge that there is a situation on the planet at this point in time, but what I'm not going to acknowledge is that we are physically in that war. But how do you prepare for the day that when you wake up and it says the U.S. is at war? I I, I can't prepare for that, but yet my mind is saying you need to prepare for that. Is that what my mother said when she said, save it for a rainy day? You've got to prepare your mind, body, and soul for that rainy day, but what if that rainy day doesn't come? 
See what I mean? You don't get that time back. It goes all the way back to the first page. What is life but time on a clock? And if we spend our time worrying about the what if, we're not getting that back. And so he also talked about one of the things that when, when we take time and, and we say this is what we're going to do today and we're not going to celebrate the day until the event takes place, we totally forget about the actual steps required to get to that place. And part of living life is, is knowing that you should be enjoying the adventure of growing. But we don't. We want to hurry up and get here. You know, what, becoming a third degree black belt, it, it took me 12 years. 12 years. That fast. 12 years that I would love to go back to just so I could listen to the struggles of trying to understand what the martial art was doing to me in the mind, body, and soul. And so people look at me today and they go, so do you still do martial arts? And, and you, you, you want to look at them and go, um, it never, ever leaves you. It, you. You try to explain that, but I've learned to do one thing. I point to my temple right here in my head and they go, Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. (sighs) Is it a waste of time to at least acknowledge the what if? You have to acknowledge it, but don't write the story. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.